I guess I'll start now. Anybody, is anybody, um, does everybody have SSH access to a server? Or is there anybody here who's thinking of doing this right now? If you can, you can, I mean, this only takes a few minutes. It's pretty easy. And if you want to go through the steps live while I'm doing it, uh, there are a couple of prerequisites ahead of time. Um, you would do a, you know, you set up an admin at email alias at your domain, mm -hmm. um, which is you know the fastest way to, ver to verify uh, domain ownership, your certificate. That's a bit farther on in the presentation, but if you're thinking of doing it, set that up in advance, and it'll make the later steps much faster. All right. Yes, that'll sit. Okay, so we have almost an hour, but. Setting this up is not very difficult, and actually it takes much less than an hour, so uh, I'll try to speak slowly. If I'm talking too fast, let me know, and or maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, turns out HTTPS on Ubuntu, using a couple of very good guides that I'll link to online, is pretty easy, pretty simple. It takes longer to get the certificate than it does to set it up, and depending on who you get the certificate from, you can have it uh, 20 or 30 minutes or so from right now. So this is something you can all do today on your website very easily. All right, so thanks to uh, Escape for sponsoring today. That's very kind of them. And Collaborate J.E. and Matt Digital Jersey for hosting it. Uh, the goal, obviously, we're going to use this third-party test, Paulus SSL Labs, which is excellent. So as you do this, you're going to kind of iterate, maybe. Uh, it's a moving target. I have an A plus for this, which I did, I think, Saturday I've tested. Uh, this isn't guaranteed. It's not one of these where you can just sit and forget it. You're going to have to come back and check this periodically as things like heart bleed happen. And you know, part of it is keeping your server patched and up to date. So an a, a, a plus is great, you know, and we can do that in the next 30 minutes or so. But it's something you have to maintain just like anything else. So keep your stuff patched and up to date. Uh, and if there's anything. Uh, keeping your score down, they'll highlight this on the website, which I'll link to, and it's a very helpful way to make sure you stay, uh, stay up to date. So, this is, we're running on Raspberry Pi, I've noticed something interesting. These are vector graphics, they're really slow, nothing to do with the presentation, but it's a cool uh, artifact here, it's barely keeping up. So, it's Ubuntu server, I use 1404, 1204 probably work fine, both have long-term support, open SSL. We call it SSL, and it's actually TLS, Transport Layer Security. Uh, I think that's what it is. Um, we we kind of use the terms interchangeably, but really it's TLS. SSL is dead, it's obsolete, but we, you know, the projects are named SSL, etc. So you'll see the, ter the terms used, set up SSL. What, what people mean really is TLS, and we'll get into that later. So the documentation. Best, this Mozilla wiki, almost the whole presentation is just nicked straight from there, right? It's brilliant. You can uh, use their uh, server configuration generator. Uh, they're on, uh, uh, at this page, and I think on GitHub is the generator. And then pause, this is the third party test, which we'll use to verify that we've got everything right. <coughs> so why bother? This is the funny thing. So if you look here, it's tiny print, but you see this. On ours, Technica, April 8, 2013, banner ads for H&R Block, a tax preparation company in the States, on Apple.com. You can imagine how they felt about that. Uh, and then this, LA Times, November 17, 1997. So this has been going on for a long time. So if you imagine you're a, you know, a designer or you've set up a nice pretty WordPress site for a client and they're selling tires or whatever, and a client goes to their website, which you've set up, HTTP, everything's perfect, you've done everything right, and now they see ads for their competitor, a different tire site or something on there, right? I don't know if this has happened, but theoretically this could happen. This is because some ISPs and some free Wi-Fi hotspot operators, among other places, try to uh, monetize things, and they inject ads, use JavaScript and inject ads onto sites which aren't their, their site. Uh, so they're, you know, you connect to their network, request a page, comes back with a little bit something extra. Uh, that's probably not something that you want, and it's easily avoided. So if you switch to your site using HTTPS and TLS, they can't do that. They can't eject. So it guarantees they get an authentic page exactly as you serve it from your server with no interference from a third party, which is great. 
Also, you, you probably saw this from uh, last month, no, uh, eighth. Um, search engine optimization, if you care about that kind of stuff, SEO, slight boost. I can't guarantee you'll be on the top of the rankings, but it does help, every little bit helps. Um, and also, it's much easier if you think to yourself, even if the client isn't technically savvy and they don't understand about HTTPS and these kinds of things, or if they don't care, it's probably easier just to set it up and make the site work this way. As long as you're okay with no XP support, because the new certificates don't support XP, so you have to decide how much you know an XP user is, is worth to your business, and maybe you know maybe encourage them to upgrade. Um, but it's easier just to set up than explain JavaScript injection and this kind of stuff that I'm, I'm talking about. They're going to go and they're going to see ads on the site potentially, or you know uh, any other any number of problems can come up. You kind of you get to control the whole pipeline between your server and the client requesting the page for the HTTPS. So that's great. And again, 1997. A quick note here too. I saw on uh, Ars Technica this morning, not to do with this, but it's the same principle. Samsung Smart TVs, we saw Monday, they have a privacy policy thing where they say don't talk about anything private uh, in the fine print in the privacy policy um, because it's uploaded to Samsung servers. These are smart TVs with voice controls. So they got some bad press for that Monday. And just this morning I've seen uh, the smart TVs, it's even worse, they're injecting ads into videos that you play on the TV. Even your own home videos that you've shot, that you own, are pausing every 30 minutes to show ads from uh, Yahoo, I think, is serving them. Which is crazy, you know, I think about it. But again, 1997, this is nothing new and it's easily avoided. And you can imagine the site operators are angry in 1997. I don't know what it cost for a certificate back then. They're nearly free now and soon to be totally free. Um, which we'll get to in the next, next slide. So a couple things to make it easier. Don't hard code this, HTTP, right? You use a protocol uh, irrelevant, or I'm probably getting the terminology wrong, but the two slashes work perfectly well. Right? If you go to, I think the first time I saw is Bootstrap CDN when you go, or if you use Font Awesome, um, when you go there and they say just copy this into your, uh, in the head of your page, they use these double slash links, and there's a note on there explaining why, but basically the, uh, the browser will default to whatever the protocol is. So for all of your links, internal links, your CSS style sheets, these kinds of things, JavaScript, uh, third-party sites, assuming they support HTTPS, uh, it'll work. So if you, want, if you want to support XP users, or you want HTTP uh, visitors, everything to work. So when they're on the site HTTP, it will automatically come and it'll stay that way HTTP. If you hard code HTTP, you'll get a mixed content warning. You get a, a nasty warning on your uh, padlock icon. And people will be confused by this, so just, just don't do it. And it, it's perfectly valid markup. Uh, you just do this starting now, and you don't have to worry about this anymore. Um, like I mentioned, if you set up an email alias, you're going to have to verify the domain to get a certificate, obviously, because they can't just give your certificate to anybody. Uh, admin at email alias or an account, you set that up already. That's the fastest way. I've done this in under 20 minutes from turning the computer on, saying, okay, I want a certificate to A plus test completed, server restarted, everything done. Um, you, know, you could do it under an hour easily. We figure out how to handle HTTP, HTTPS redirect if you want. I've got code samples here coming up. They're very, very easy. Oh, www or not. Um, Check that your CDN, if you're using support, it. most do. Uh, any of these common things, JavaScript libraries, um, they all do it. It's, you know, it's old school. <clears throat> IP tables, firewall. Not that it happened to me, but make sure you open if you're using this. Uh, you'll be totally stumped. You got to open port 443 for, for SSL, um, or you'll be really struggling. <laughs> and it's one of those simple things where if you've only opened port 80 or 22 for SSH access, you know, you got to do it. Varnish. No HTTPS support. If you're using Apache, unfortunately, I really like Varnish and I use Varnish, and you should be using it if you're not for HTTP traffic. No support, but you can use it with Nginx still. Nginx proxy it, so it's easy. And Nginx has better support now with the um, development version for some of the more advanced things we'll get into. Right, let's get started. The basics install OpenSSL, right? Pseudo aptitude. I use aptitude, and you can use apt-get if you like. Aptitude I prefer because it keeps track of dependencies and later, let's say you don't need to open SSL or 
any, any other package and you uninstall it, it'll keep track of things that only that package needed and get rid of them too. It's a little bit tidier. So you generate your secret key and a CSR, the certificate signing request. A uh, quick note here, so if you just copy this straight here, I bold and capitalize the things which you gotta adapt for your own machine wherever you want the output to go. But this, the no DES flag, I do this, you decide if that's secure enough for you or not. Uh, no passphrase for your key on the server. We're going to change so root only uh, can um, read and write only, and you know other users can't do it. That's the only thing you want to keep secret. And if you don't do that, you could skip that. You could just go right to the uh, the new key flag. You'll have to re-enter the key passphrase every time you restart your <coughs> server or restart Apache or, or Nginx, and this is kind of a, a pain to do so. And you can always just get, again, I mean, this is a 20, 30 minute process. You can always just generate a new key and reissue a certificate. That's included in the price of a certificate, so really why bother? You'll spend more than 20 or 30 minutes typing that password in and waiting for the server to restart. Uh, so I recommend doing it. Key size 2048 is fine. SHA 2 certificate. <coughs> uh, Chrome, I think I can enter this later, but basically, Chrome is unilaterally warning users now. If you have SHA-1 certificates, which are pretty common, they're considered unsafe. Um, so you should upgrade to SHA-2 certificates. And this, the SHA-256, this will get you a SHA-2 certificate. And if you use either of the recommended vendors that I have in here, they'll pick up on this and automatically issue you the correct SHA-2 certificate. You can always do it again if you get it wrong, but uh, this is the way forward. SHA-1 is just not good enough. And if you're doing this, why do it with a weak key? Um, I think that's it, yeah. All right, key field. So you enter this command, uh, this command here, right, and then adapt it. Then you get these key fields. Uh, most of these you can skip, right? I put it in there if you really want to do it. I put, yeah, if you really look here, I put JE for country name, uh, just to represent, uh, totally optional. You could do it if you like, doesn't matter, leave that blank. The only thing you have to get is your fully qualified domain name, the common name sample.com or whatever, a different TLD. They'll automatically put the www on there for you. So your certificate will be good for example.com and www.example.com. The same is also true for subdomains. So if you want blog.example.com, your certificate will come with www.blog.example.com. Uh, and this challenge password and company name and whatever, just skip that. Hit enter for everything. Make sure you get this and hit enter for everything else, it just blast through it. If you want to put more stuff in there, get on, you go ahead and do it. Not necessary. So, get a certificate. I use Gandhi.net because I like them, they're an ethics good company. Uh, it's 11 pounds for one year, you're not breaking the bank for that. And if you're doing this website for a client, you could probably charge a whole lot more for uh, HTTPS sites. I do, I charge hundreds of pounds extra to add it. And some of them like it, there's a perception of quality. Um, and they're really fast. Uh, both have guides for issuing certificates on their site, slightly different, but you've generated the key and the certificate signing request in the in an earlier slide, and we're just gonna grab just a cat command here and output into the terminal your certificate signing request. So if you do this, select, paste it onto the relevant part in their certificate sign up uh, process, and then send that off, they'll do the domain verification by a DNS text record or if you have the admin at email set up and you're good to go. Cheap SSL is cheap, 393 for one year. Um, and again this, right, so there's the links and it's very easy. These are all domain validated, which is good enough. You don't need to get in and verify company docs and having the green, you know, address bar with your name unless you really want to spend a lot of money. Um, no need to do that. This is geared more for protecting a, a business here in Jersey, client website or your blog or whatever. Um, so there we go. So good news, new certificate authority. This, uh, I don't know what you call, Let's Encrypt uh, initiative, new uh, entity here backed up by Mozilla, Akamai, Cisco, EFF, and Identrust. So big names there, good, good thing. Uh, it's free, automated, and open. They have betas already, which you can run. Um, no browser recognition yet for the betas, they're just doing it, just testing it, but they've got code out and working, and it's going to be cross-signed by this identrust, the certificate authority, 
So they'll probably get some nasty looks at the next certificate authority party for ruining the business, and completely destroying this this business. But that's cool that they've done this and set it up totally free and automated. So just a quick note: don't buy two-year certificates now. They're a better deal, but you don't need to buy certificates starting from mid 2015 this year. Right, so one year, good enough. And after that, you won't need to bother buying certificates. We'll go with Let's Encrypt. Uh, and again, cross sign. So, certificate authorities can sign each other's certificates, and the browsers will automatically recognize this, and you're good to go. So, you don't, it's not like you need to only target users of new browsers. Uh, it'll just start working with browser acceptance right away. So, get your server ready. I like everything tidy, so make a directory, Apache or Nginx, called SSL, and we'll put the certificates in there, and your keys, etc. Best practice, this unattended upgrades package is great. Install, and then depackage reconfigure here, the upgrades. So we saw that in the news, heart bleed, wake up in the morning, it's like, you know, lots of news, big problems, everybody's memory is getting just hoovered down by uh, every, and even everybody who wants to try. I woke up in the morning, saw that, I said, oh dear, that's not good. Check the server, make sure it's updated. I have this installed, and it was already patched. I'm good, and you can use third-party, you know, Heartbleed checker sites, and, you know, good to go. Because it existed for a while, you still have to reissue certificates when something like this happens. So you do a new key, new certificate signing request in the earlier steps, which is quick and easy, and then you're good to go. You just do it. You assume your key was compromised, so you start over a clean slate, new, new credentials, and your machine is patched and you're good to go, which is great. So unattended upgrades, highly recommended for reasons beyond just HTTPS. So some of the key features, OCSP, the Certificate Status Protocol, it's tiny here, unfortunately. You'll have to really squint or, or get the slides online, but <coughs> this is Netcraft, which is a fantastic site if you want to check up time of all kinds of different things and the health of the, uh, the net in general. A lot of metrics on here. If we look here, it's again it's too tiny, but outage. This is in the last 24 hours. The revocation list, keys that are bad or reissued and have expired, these kinds of things. It's a huge list depending on the the key issuer. This one, 792, 7092k, seven megabytes, right? So if you think, if your browser had to check every time it went to a site that this company issued certificates, it's seven megabyte download and then it has to parse that. That's not practical, so obviously we, we need something better than the, the revocation list. So we use this OCSP, which just grabs, it's more efficient, it just grabs the necessary records. And we'll get it later where you can tell your, your server to grab this in advance and cache a copy and send that with a page and completely cut this step out. So again, you know, these is 7.92, 5 megs and down, you know, not efficient, not efficient to, to expect that your browser is going to fetch this data and make sure the certificates are good um, for every page load, just not practical. So OCSP is what you use. Session resumption, just quick, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. You reuse some of the secrets between a client and server for a new connection, someone comes and returns later the next day, whatever, you can set the times for this. They say they recommend to restart servers daily when possible, you decide if that's practical for you or not. Some people don't like, they, you know, they want to run in for years. Uh, I restart it daily, you said like cron or something. Uh, forward secrecy, client and server negotiate uh, a key that's never transmitted. This is great, this is what you want. This means that if somebody grabs your credentials, like with Heartbleed, and they get your key, they can't go back and look at historic traffic and decrypt that with your key if you do get owned, which is nice. Uh, any good encryption has forward secrecy, which is kind of essential. Um, Speedy here. Just saw Monday, they threw me a curveball. Speedy is being retired. Works very well. You're going to use this. And we'll, there's a code examples there. Good browser support. Opera Mini, which doesn't seem to support anything every time I check. It uh, doesn't support it, but native in Nginx now in the main line if you use that version. Apache 2.4 in development. It's got to be replaced with an HTTP2, whatever that is. <laughs> Not an expert on that. Uh, but that's coming next year. And so use Speedy for now, and it's probably not coming to Apache. They'll probably just call it HTTP2 on a future version. So it does say, you know, some, some optimizations like pushing content. Uh, it anticipates that you're going to need something, JavaScript, if you're going to a certain part of the page, etc. 
not resending headers. You don't need to send headers every time for subsequent page loads if they're the same. Some kind of logical uh, things. Uh, HTTPS. So the strict transport security. This tells when they, when a browser comes, a client visits the site. You can tell that client, hey, only ever access this site by HTTPS for these many seconds. In this example, well, there's an example later. I just set it for a year because that's how, good, how long certificates are good for. Them. And then later, when the browser comes, even if the person types in HTTP, the browser knows automatically. Don't even think about connecting over HTTP. Use a secure one. Hardcore mode here, if you really want, you can have it hard coded into browsers. You can test, make sure you got a good rating and you got it working, obviously. And think about subdomains, because all your subdomains have to be secure as well to do this. But you can go to this website here. This Chromium developer has set it up. And he will hard code your website into Chrome browsers, uh, Firefox, and maybe one other. Details are on there. But make certain you're sure you want to do this before you do it, because, again, it's hard coded in the browser. So if you mess up or you want to roll back and think, well, I, I don't want encrypted connections anymore, they won't be able to use your website, and they, you know, this is a disaster if you don't, uh, if you're not certain you want to do this. I've done it on my site, uh, and now that I see it's free, it's great, but that's optional. SHA-2 I mentioned earlier, you know, Google's going to throw weird warnings in there until next year when it really gets, uh, you know, more obvious warnings. SHA-2 is just no good, and if you use the code samples to generate a key for a SHA-2 key, um, you're okay, you can avoid this easily. A certificate tester here with Shaw, that's a fancy domain name there. This Nginx only for now. So we can send a prime. The longer the prime, the better the security. And we can do this ahead of time. This takes a while. I did this on a DigitalOcean VPS, the $5 a month one, the cheapest one. And I gave up after about 20 minutes. Uh, it just was still chugging away. When you type this in, we're going to take a very long, very secure prime which will be used to generate the key, which will give us really good security as required for the A+. Uh, you can reuse it, right? We'll put this, use this like a certificate. This will go with your certificates in your Apache or Nginx config. And it could take a little while. This is one of the things you want to do in advance. So do this first. If you're going to do this, follow this guide, this step, and do your email admin app. So those things are set up in advance. It takes DNS to propagate. Um, you only have to do that once. So basics in Apache, enable the module obviously or it won't work. Disable the default SSL site. I had some warnings here. This may be obsolete or some other errors I made, but if you just disable it, the problems go away, which is very easy. And we're not going to use this site anyway. We already have a site working, I assume, so we're just going to add another block listening on port 443 instead of port 80. Uh, and you can reuse the a lot of the configuration from your, your port 80 block. Um, redirect instead of a rewrite again if you want to support XP you can't do this but this is very efficient this is how you do it no need to fire up your, your uh, rewrite engine just a blanket rewrite uh, redirect permanent slash straight to your site uh, if you with or without the WW you know set it however you want um, but again not if you want to support XP but this is what I do it's very fast so certificate paths Apache, you use your, uh, the file, your chain file, which we'll, we'll see later. It's uh, basically when you get your key, you get a couple extra files with it, and you have to concatenate these all together. And this is your trust chain with each company along the way, signing each other's uh, until you get to the ones inbuilt into your browser. Um, disable SSL, uh, IE 11, I think, and earlier, it has a thing where it, 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 you could do a downgrade attack and say, well, TLS won't work. Use SSL3 instead, which is ancient and easily exploited. So you don't want to do this. So we'll just remove the opportunity for IE to fail in this way and disable version 2 and version 3 of SSL. It's TLS only, again, even though we still call it SSL. Cypher Suite, go back to the Mozilla wiki page. Way too long. It's a very, very long uh, group of Cypher Suites in a certain order which gives great uh, browser compatibility and security. SSL, oh sorry, SSL compression off. That's the other thing too, you don't want to do this. There's another type of attack which is pretty nerdy and we won't even get into, but if you want to leave that on and test your site and you'll see what happens on the, 
on the page. Uh, OCSP stapling again. This is where we get into where you can have your browser fetch. Um, yeah, sorry. This is where we get into where you have your browser fetch this certificate, which is much more efficient than checking the whole uh, revocation list. Um, so we turn it on. I don't think there's a way to, to, to set the DNS, which we'll do in, in Nginx, but it works. You, know, you grab your Apache 2 CTL with a V flag to get your version. And if you're doing this Ubuntu 12, uh, 1404, excuse me, or later, you already have a reason much later, so you don't need to worry about this. You could just copy that and use it. This again, one or the other. If you're doing, if you're going for the hardcore mode there, and you want all your subdomains, and you want it, you know, you, there's no no going back. Use this one, uncomment this. Or if you just want the, the, the A plus grade, and you don't want to get into all this stuff, you know, permanent changes, you would just use this one. So just uncomment the hash mark and send that top one. Play it safe for that one if you want. This is not an accident here. Outside your virtual host you would put your SSL stapling cache uh, in your .com file for the website. It doesn't go in there, it has to go out for Apache 2.4 later. Um, and, that's it. and again, I think it's, I think that's time, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, that's the command, and that's on the Mozilla Wiki. Copied straight from them. Nginx, same deal, kind of, right? Instead of server alias, we just give it two server names. This is the blanket redirect, and don't do this if you want to support XP uh, or if you want to have a, a site accessible unencrypted because this is again just blank, not possible HTTP over port 80. The basics, if you have IPv6, the IPv6, do not comment this. Speedy again, Nginx uh, supporting it now. Highly recommend you use it, very efficient. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Time out there. Um, and your compression level. I'm using six on mine, I see no problem with it. Yeah, SSL is very lightweight. You know, it's not, they used to think it's hard on the CPU, and it's just not, it's very efficient. Uh, you don't really need to worry about a performance hit from it unless you're really doing a massive site. Um, so, certificate. Your intermediates all go into one, and then your secret key. Uh, Nginx is a little bit different where you put your own certificate and the intermediates all together it may be possible, there's probably another directive, but this is the, the, the examples I followed did this way. It works perfectly, so we'll just leave it like that. Same deal, TLS 1.2, 1.1, and 1. No SSL support for this, TLS only. I prefer the cipher orders uh, from the, uh, the wiki here. These are handy headers here, which you want to set. So um, you want to avoid cross-site scripting, but we don't want to cause problems if you're using a CMS, like Joomla, for example. If you try to edit a page or um, if you're uploading content, I think it does it in an iframe, maybe, maybe not, but I could have that bit vague on that. But if you use same origin, normally you would put block or um, deny, I think is the term. But if you just, same origin is safe enough and it won't cause problems with your CMS, so you don't need to worry about this. I've done the, uh, the homework on that for you. Uh, Cross-site, this is uh, the, the browser, it by default has this, and we're just going to, in case the user has disabled this, we're going to re-enable it anyways, just as a best practice. Uh, these, I think, I think all three are required for the A+, and I've just used them from the beginning anyways, never had any problems, so recommended. Pick one of the following two lines, same deal, right, hardcore mode here up top, or just use that safe one. This is the HSTS again. The command there where we're generating the, the giant prime, this is where you're going to put it. So path to, I put it with my keys, and then same with SSL stapling. On this, Apache doesn't have this option, it, it figures it out by itself. On this, you need to tell it what DNS resolver to use to look at. Because in your certificates, which is the server's decode, it's you know the, the list to check for revocation of that certificate is right in the certificates. So the, the server will parse this and the browsers know to check this and look it up. So we can grab that, we can fetch that ahead of time and make things even more efficient for, for SSL, TLS. And we can cache a copy and send it when, so when someone comes to the page, you say, here's a cached copy and they can go check it themselves and independently verify this if they want. But it's great because you sent it already. Speed things right up uh, and use whatever 
DNS you want, 8888 or 8844, that's Google, probably some of you are using that on your routers. Or what I use is OpenNIC at top two. You can go to their website and it will detect where you are and recommend to uh, DNS servers. So if you have a server in France or something, you might not want to copy these, but you just go look at their list if you want, or use the Google ones. So Nginx mainline version, what I recommend, they used to call it development version. It's totally stable. I use it. You use it on a production site if you like, or you want to be extra, extra safe, you can use the, uh, the one that ships with Ubuntu. Uh, I highly recommend just switch to the mainline. So you have to grab Python software properties, make sure uh, you can download the, the repository and use it, and then just start it up, and it's good to add itself to the list of programs that start when you reboot. Working with certificates and keys, like I mentioned before, you know, root owns the key and can read write only. Your intermediate certificates are going to vary. You'll have these two if you use Gandhi, these two if you use cheap SSL security. These are emailed with your certificate. These you have to go on a Gandhi uh, website and copy and just create a new two new files called those terms there, which will be self-explanatory from the site. So for Nginx, we chain everything, all of these. Right, so just cat everything straight across for Gandhi. Code examples, this is self-explanatory, come back to this. Uh, there's not a test on this later, except for if you're setting it up and then you see if it works. But these are tested and working, good, good uh, bits. You just bold and capitalize things you change, adapt for your own needs. So one small thing, Gandhi certificate does not have a new line character in, in the end, and this breaks everything. So when you first do it, when you cat these, and then you look at the certificate in a text editor or, or in your terminal, <coughs> excuse me, it's straight across like this. That's wrong. You got to break it across. So five dashes, examples in there, <coughs> just nano or your VI or Vim or whatever you like to uh, have a look at it and make sure just manually add that new line character at the end. You're good. That took a while to figure out. That's a pain. So final steps, test. Right, test, make sure it's right. You should get a syntax okay for Apache or Nginx, same deal. Uh, restart, graceful, and you might have users on the site. Uh, you are going to be redirected to HTTPS when you do this. So just graceful restart will make sure all the connections are closed and then open up uh, the restarted instance and the new connections. Same deal with Nginx T to test. And that's about it. So extra reading, lots and lots of extra reading. This is their HTTP headers where I got it from. This is super helpful, even if you don't care about HTTP, care about HTTPS. This HTML5 boilerplate is really good. Lots and lots of stuff in it, cache busting, all kinds of cool stuff you could do with your server. Put it in your um, .ht access, I guess, if you want, or if you have SSH access, put it in your config. Many, many things in there. Definitely recommend check that out, regardless of HTTPS. DigitalOcean has some good tutorials, some essentials there, and the official docs. So, extra help. If someone wants to do this today, I'm happy to help you for free. If you uh, want me to set this up for you, hey, you know, give me a call. We'll set it up at a reasonable price. Or just do it yourself. I'll be delighted to see if people do this themselves. I'll be very happy. More pleased than, uh, than if you can't do it and you need help. But I'm happy to help you for today and yeah, after today. Quick thing, public domain, so I used a bunch of copyrighted logos, this, this, that, and the other. I'm releasing this, you can download it off the website, use it, do whatever you want with it. If you start selling these and print these and get sued, I'm going to laugh at you if you think I'm going to help you, that you're on your own, right? So copy this, use it as you like, and then don't worry about it, you know, I release my part of this to the public domain from Jersey. And I think that's it. That's it. Done. Yeah. So who's going to go do this now? <laughs> no one puts their hand up. Well, it's, it's easy. And again, you see, it's only a few pounds. Inexpensive, quick and easy. Try. And all these slides are on, on your website, the um, mm -hmm. Brosman IT? I did. I will put, uh, I put just the link. There's nothing on the page. That, there's no link on the page to click to, but I'll put that up later. Okay. I didn't have time this morning, unfortunately. But if you go to brosmanit.com slash download slash A plus HTTPS, I think. Right. It's on there. And it will be uh, discoverable later today. Cool. Excellent. Brilliant. Thanks so much. Yeah, that's very good. Thank you.
Yeah, again, you know, credit to the, the documentation. Much of this is just copied. I just got the relevant bits. Put them in a nice order with code examples. Yeah, that is very interesting, really concise, and really to the point. So, yeah, that, was, that was really good. Okay, brilliant. Well, I need